just, uh, it's important to spread positivity. It's important to be positive because, you know, I had an interesting conversation. I had a great dinner actually the other day with TJ Francis and their oldest daughter or TJ and Francis' oldest daughter. Um, well, Lexi's actually their oldest daughter. So <laughs> with Dee, she just turned 13. So, um, it's crazy because, you know, I remember when Didi, when she was like two, you know, and I'm seeing her grow up into a, a very beautiful young woman. It's, it's scary. But um, we had such a good conversation about the importance of like happiness, you know, and that's not to this conversation when it comes out across and I'm working on it, you know, and I apologize if I do offend anyone in the way it comes out. I do believe in the existence of depression and anxiety. Um, I don't have a medical definition of it. And I, I just don't have a solid understanding of it, to be honest. I do believe that my generation and the generation under, uh, uh, younger than myself tend to throw around words such as depression and anxiety uh, in a too broad of a sense. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I had a very important conversation that I had with my cousin Didi that I would like to share with you guys is – you know, happiness is a choice. Um, I know for a lot of people out there, I'm not negating that you have an actual struggle and I, 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 I wouldn't listen to me. I don't know how to help with that. All right. This is for everybody else out there. You know, um, I, I wish I could help with depression and with anxiety. I, I genuinely, I'm, I'm all thumbs. I'm lost in that category. But happiness does come from within. And this is the story that I told um, my cousin Didi. I remember when my dad died, um, within that week, you know, I was obviously really sad and everything like this. And I had a conscious choice that I could live my life, um, at sad and I can let this affect me for the rest of my life, or I can choose to be happy and I can try to, you know, live my life from there. A lot of different religions, a lot of different cultures will say something along the lines of you can't control the outside world. You can only control how you react to it. And I think that's such an important understanding is that it's tough. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it's not easy to always be happy. It is an ongoing, active, mental activity that I, I try to always promote, that I always want to promote positivity and happiness. Because a lesson I learned from my father is that you got to lead by example. You know what I mean? I can't tell you guys to be happy if I myself am not leading by example and trying to put that best foot forward. You know, lately I've been going out in my backyard looking at my grass because it's long. I like long grass and I see the wind blowing and I'm just trying to appreciate that. And I tell my girlfriend, yo, look at the grass. It's blowing. It's, it's like energy. It's like waves is in there. And I don't – she hasn't gotten it yet. You know, I'm still working on her. She hasn't 100% like seen what I'm talking about. But it really is finding the beauty. It's not just appreciating, oh, that's nice. It's truly loving and finding the beauty in the little things. Um, and it's okay to have – bad days. It's okay to have bad weeks. I just, I worry about anybody that I care about personally that's going through tough times that allows it to drag on and to affect their life. You know, um, my boy OG is drinking. I love the sound of that. But, you know, again, I just, I, I you know, I don't want to negate that any, anybody struggle if you're, you know, struggling with depression or anxiety. Those are, those are legitimate issues. And I don't think that like this is not the only solution that's going to help in that. And again, I have to say that I'm not qualified at all to be speaking about that. So, you know, don't listen to me in regards to this. I'm just saying that I think for everybody out there, you know, it, it takes work to be happy. And it's something that if, if I can recommend you doing like, you know, following. I saw some people saying that they're doing the walks every day. I love to see that. It makes me feel good. It encourages me to keep doing the walks. And it encourages me to keep spreading information that I think could be beneficial. So just like the walks is an everyday type of thing, this is an everyday type of thing. And I actually... To be honest, I didn't really appreciate this little nugget of advice that I got. I got it. I know I got it from my father. My cousin TJ reinstilled it in me because I believe my father instilled it in TJ. And it's that um, expression of gratitude. You'd be surprised with uh, how much your life will change if you just wake up and say, you know what? I'm grateful I got this in my life or I'm so happy I have this. And it's such an interesting thought. And it may even sound out there, but... 
you know, we create our own realities, everybody's individual reality and the way you perceive the world and the reason why it is the way it is, is because of your thoughts and your perceptions. And then they're very different from the next person over. And once you have that understanding and you know how that can actually affect your life, you know, just, I'm going to stop this esoterical philosophical conversation. I'm just going to talk about Instagram. All right. Instagram can be awesome and it can also be just awful. It's horrible. And I'm going to tell you why. I spend way too much time on the explore page. Okay. And now the explore page could obviously lead you to great connections with people, introduce you to new ideas and topics. But I see so much garbage is just being thrown out there, gossip, negative stuff that I don't even care about. You know what I mean? It has, I don't even know how it shows up on there. And you have to realize when you're in clicking on that and you're just doing mind numbing stuff, what you want to do is you want to focus on the positive stuff. You want to not necessarily ignore the negative stuff, but you got to put a lot more positivity in your life. You start clicking on the positive posts, you'll notice your Instagram feed turns into a more positive post. It's actually very interesting and you can do this with anything. For example, if I want to see more motorcycles on my Instagram, I'll just click on all motorcycle pictures and then pretty sure like in a week or so, my entire explore page is all motorcycles. So going back to the philosophical stuff, you wake up, you look for positivity in your life. Give it a week, maybe a month, who knows? But that's that's pretty much all you're going to see. You know, and the older I get, the more I realize that um, my father was right, TJ was right, and is right, you know, is um, you really have to express gratitude. Um, and that's just, that's the, that's step one, you know what I mean? Or one of the steps, I don't have a, I don't have a book coming out, I just want to spread some little nuggets of positivity, little pieces of information, and encourage you guys to, you know, be compassionate, to care for one another, because... At some point, you know, you're going to need help. And there was one song that my father introduced me to that, you know, I, I feel like it has such a powerful message. And that's Lean On Me by Bill Withers. And if you don't know that song, I highly encourage you to go listen to it. I highly encourage you to read the lyrics. You know, this is the reason why I'm recommending it is, is it is a great song. And Bill Withers is a fantastic artist. But the... um the meaning behind the song and however you choose to interpret it is very important because the way I choose to interpret it is, you know, um, he's telling this person to lean on him when they're not strong, you know, um, he even says something along, swallow your pride, you know, and he also knows it's at one point in the song, he says, we all need someone to lean on, you know, and that means that at some point you're going to need someone to lean on. And I'm a big believer in karma when I'm out there on the road on my motorcycle, just even how I treat people. And I promise you, I can see it pay back in dividends. For example, I went camping the other day, making some videos about it soon. Had to drive a van. Um, it wasn't my van, but I had to go drive a van, grab some more supplies on uh, Angela's Crest. It's a high speed road. And I always pull over because I was going too slow. So I always pull over. People go around, get out of my way and keep on going. The next day when I had to ride that same road on my motorcycle, everybody that was slow in front of me, pulled over. Now, if you're a motorcycle, you kind of understand how that's great. But when it just comes down to it, it's karma. You know what I mean? I, it, it came back full circle for me. So, you know, I, I can just give examples like this all the time of little nuggets and stuff that I'm slowly learning. But I just want to encourage everybody. It's coming up on that 30 minutes. I got to look more presentable for my meeting coming up and uh, maybe make a coffee, get a little bit more energy. But I do want to continue having these things. I got to think about what it is that I, I, you know, I had a whole great talk thought out in my head on my walk today. Kind of went out the window. I was just kind of vibing here. I wanted to share with you guys what I've been thinking about, but I really think compassion is, is such an important um, human quality. You know, um, there's sympathy and empathy. I believe sympathy is that you can kind of feel what somebody's going through and empathy is, you know, what someone's going through. I don't really believe in empathy, um, personally, because I don't think that people can truly know what someone is going through. I think that you can feel for them and I think that you can have compassion. That's why I value compassion so highly because I feel like compassion allows you to put yourself kind of in their shoes. For example, I've met a few people who've lost their father. I lost my father. It's obviously a deep pain, but the reason and why it's a pain is completely different for everybody that I've met. So I can be, you could say I'm empathetic towards them, but I don't believe that I truly am. I'm compassionate and I'm sympathetic towards them. 
And maybe you understand, maybe you agree with what I'm saying, maybe you don't, but you know, leave some comments down below or I don't know how this is gonna work, but I'm gonna leave this up here, you know, because I think it's very important to continue to preach positivity about compassion and understanding people. And this is where it's hard. And this is where I think everybody comes down to it and it is a fault. Um, I think we're hypocritical by nature. And I don't know if, and by we, I kind of mean humans. And by that, I'm just looking at myself. I'll preach something or I'll say something to you guys. And then I'm sure you can find an action in my life in which I didn't take my own advice. And I've seen that with other people. I've seen that with myself. So it's important to know that you're going to make mistakes. You're not going to always be on, but it is important to start laying that groundwork for compassion. For understanding other people and I think that you try to understand you try to feel maybe not the pain but yeah I mean, you try to put yourself in their shoes to understand what it's like to deal with they're dealing with you know and you got to know you can't change the world by yourself you can't make it better in one day but step by step little by little you know they say Rome wasn't built in a day um, and I obviously don't think that we're going to all of a sudden change the course of history just off of one live. But I think that if everybody here, we got 735 people here.